Hey everybody, and we'll let the song play for a little bit. Let me catch up here with everything. How's everybody doing? Pete lost weight. No, no, I didn't. I gained 20 pounds since I quit smoking exactly six, six months ago, yesterday. No, two days ago. All right, let me uh, bring this live here. Give me a couple minutes. Give me a minute here. Give me a minute. Let me get situated here. There it is. It's live. Okay, I can see my chat now here on this side. So that should be okay. Hey guys, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? All right, we gotta stop this though. No, we gotta stop this. What's going on? I got a couple to topics to talk about. Uh, one of them would be how to scale your eBay business, at least help you guys a little bit how to scale your business. Oh, it's excellent. Now I can see my chat here and I can see my chat here. That will help a lot. Okay, <laughs> Pete, what's your habit now? Uh, too much food. I love to snack and stuff. That's why I gained 20 pounds. Uh, another topic is we're going to talk a little bit about vintage electronics and this new site that I've been using for a few months that helps me a lot finding stuff that you can't normally find out there, um, like pricing, you know. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, shipping and handling. Um, and then I want to announce somebody, some new channel that it's on YouTube. It's a podcast that I've been listening for the last few months, and I really dig it. So, all right, maybe first uh, let's get into um, – I know this was unannounced. Oh, what happened? My chat. I just dropped my chat on this side. What's going on? That's not good. No room. I hear for <laughs> I'm here for politics. No, no politics on this channel. Hi guys, how how is everybody doing? Why is this chat cutting out here every time I okay? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I got my chat here. If this one keeps cutting out, it doesn't matter. What's up, everybody? What's up, vinyl 79? Um JP Swift Seller, Wade. What's up, Wade? How you doing? Uh, I got I got you as a ranch on my channel, so if you can keep an eye on things, I would appreciate it. Um, who else I have a ranch here? I should have a couple ranches. TCR, what's up? Um, all right, let's get into the topic I want to talk about. Um, you guys know that I love to sell vintage electronics, right? You can see it all around me, all behind me, all kinds of stuff. It's my gig. And, and there's so many names out there. Because I was talking to a gentleman the other day in my store, and, and, and he was telling me, actually, he found some, some very cool turntable that he says, Pete, I can't find any information on it, right? 
uh, nothing on eBay, no past history. And, and then I mentioned to him this new service. I, it's not new. I've been using it probably for about, I don't know, half a year. Um, and it's excellent. What it does, it draws services. I mean, it draws information from all kinds of websites, not services, but websites, like it, it, and from all over the world. Um, so it, it will get information, what was actually listed on a web and what was sold for if there was a physical transaction that somebody paid for it on a web. Uh, from a lot of different you know sites, from from Etsy, from Amazon, from uh, eBay, uh, from Allegro, which is a site that it's used in Europe. I mean, and it will, and we'll put all that information on that site. And that site it's called Hi-Fi Shark, um, and you will see that a lot of times on there you will see like the money amounts, right? Something sold in pounds or in yens or or PLZ, which is like Polish Zwote, uh, but it gives you a good indication what it's sold for, and it's and it's info from all over the world. If it's sold on German eBay or English eBay or Australian eBay, you'll have the info there because there's a lot of names out there that you probably guys never heard of, uh, you know, like Torrents or Revox or Krell. Any of these names ring a bell? But you will run into that stuff out there in the wild, especially at the garage sales or, or thrift stores, and you like you have no idea. I mean, there's a ton of names, you know, Tiek, Rotel, Akai, Ned, Iowa. I mean, you can go on and on and on, and a lot of this stuff just doesn't show up. So I wanted to share this website. Um, they're not paying me anything for it. There's no affiliated link or anything like that. I will link it below later on after the video. But it's Hi-Fi Shark. Uh, I think it's a valuable tool if you are a reseller and you're selling tools. So, I mean, uh, you, if you're selling uh, uh, electronics, uh, incredible. I mean, I, I love it. You can pretty much find anything that it's been sold ever. Um, so, look that up. All right, let me uh, let me look at the chat here. I, I'm ignoring it for a little bit. We got almost 200 people watching. I know I didn't announce the show, so it's actually better for me when it's not announced like that because it's less people. It's a lot easier to look at the chat when it's when you have 500 people in here. It's scrolling so fast you can't even see anything. Uh, Wonker Country Electronics. I love the hill figure shirt. Yeah, I don't know when I got it a while ago. It's chilly though. It's been it's been chilly all day today. It's been raining all day too. Ugly day, like upper forties, maybe low fifties, rainy all day. Um what else I want to talk about? Somebody asked me, and I'm gonna actually pull up the email so maybe I can read part of it. Where was it? So this question was about Packing, packing and shipping charges. Um, appreciate the super chat. Appreciate it. Um, blah, blah, blah. We enjoy the videos. Um, I want to read it at the right moment here. Anyway. <laughs> To make it to make it a short story about the shipping info, somebody was asking me, Pete, you mentioned before on one of your videos that uh, you also charge for not only shipping part but handling part, and and should we all do that? It all depends on a product. It all depends how much you're selling the product for, how much room you got. Um, I hardly ever do any free shipping. Uh, occasionally, I will if it's a big competition item. But 99% of the time, I charge for my shipping, and I charge for my handling and for my time. Um, and I don't think it, there's anything wrong with that. Um, I know a lot of guys, a lot of people out there selling have different models. A lot of people just, you know, are all about free shipping, that it bumps them all the way up in, in search. But I sell a lot of unique stuff, so I usually don't worry about that. Um, so I charge for all the shipping and handling, um, and I usually try to make a little bit of money on that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, everything costs, right? 
the, the stupid label costs, the poly mailer costs, the box costs, the ink that you're printing the mailers. I mean, everything costs money. Yes, it's pennies here and there, but after all, it adds up. And I don't see anything wrong with uh, with charging for that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Can you guys say something here in the chat? Who's charging? Who's doing, say, free or charge for shipping? I'm kind of curious to see what the response is going to be in the chat. Um, especially when you got to go out and really buy boxes and you're shipping bigger stuff. A lot of us, we get we get um, free supplies for smaller things, right? From USPS, you can get a bunch of free stuff. But So I see lots of charge, 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 free, charge, free, charge, charge, free. Yeah, so I see actually quite a quite a quite a few people are charging for uh, for the shipping and I don't see there's nothing wrong with that and and your time is valuable right it takes time to go buy these boxes you got to pay for the boxes why not getting reimbursed especially if it's something unique big and you're really spending time on something to be picked if it's if it's easy and simple uh, that you just throw it in in a poly mailer and off it goes and you don't have to really protect it and spend any time. Yeah, different ball game. You know, you spend 40 seconds or a minute or two on an item to be packed and shipped, no big deal. But if you're actually spending time, for example, on something like this uh, for half an hour to make sure it's packed correctly and double boxed, Everything is involved, and most people will understand that. So I don't see anything wrong with that, um, with that model. Now, the question was from Debbie. So Debbie, I hope that answers your question, Debbie from, from Indiana. Um, another topic I want to get into. Is and then I can answer some questions if you guys we can do a little quick Q and A uh, if you guys have a few questions. Um, how to scale your eBay business, right? This this happens all the time, and I get I like I think this is like one of the most asked questions out there um, when it comes to reselling. When you finally get your feet wet, you get yourself established, you start selling. Things are going well. Um, you're starting to move the product. You finally figure out what really, what to buy, what to avoid. Uh, you got your game going, right? The hustle is there. You know what you're doing. Um, but then all of a sudden, you get to that point that there's not enough time in a day, right? Even if you're a part-timer or full-timer, you realize, right, that you're sourcing out there. You're hitting the stores. You're hitting the garage sale. You're hitting the the free markets or estate sales and you get stuck, right? Because you just sourced for eight or 10 hours that day. You come home, you're tired, you beat. Now you got to clean this stuff, get it ready, get it pictured, put it out there, list and list and list. And all of a sudden you are in like for 16 hours, right? And next day you do it again and, and eventually it gets it to you. Um, so how we go about really going over that hump and another part is most people when i talk to everybody loves sourcing we all love sourcing we all love going out there finding the stuff um finding the deals finding the bargains finding that treasure but we i bet you 90 percent of you out there actually hate listing all that stuff uh, unless it's something super like yeah, I want to clean it. I'm so excited. You know, it's one of the one of a kind thing. Yeah, but that's that one item that you're listing that it's like one of a kind. Yeah, it's gonna sell for five hundred bucks. <laughs> I bought it for ten. Um, but most of the time, we don't like listing. So that's when it comes time maybe to figure out. Maybe it's time to get a small office or warehouse space. Maybe it's time to get your first part time employee. Think about that. And if you're already making money and things are going well, it's not a bad model to get into, especially if you are the person who's like, I really want to source, but I don't want to list. 
it takes a little bit of time to train somebody the way you do things. But actually, in the long run, it can pay out big time. Even if it's somebody only working for you part time, four or five hours, four or five, four or five hours a day, five days a week. Um, it's it's something to think about, and and that's the question I've been asked a lot. I mean, like almost nonstop. How do I scale it? That's the only way to do it because eventually you pick out, you reach that moment that you, unless you're happy at what you are at. There's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times we want to go out there, we want to find stuff, but we don't want to list. Then it's time to go and look at that model. Yes, I'm hiring somebody, I'm training them. And uh, that's how you grow your business. I mean, that's how I grew my business. Um, yeah, it's not easy to finding right people, but there's a lot of people that do it out there. Um, and they're successful, so it's very doable. I do it. I know other resellers that I know they do it. I know actually companies that have many, many people working for them and listing. Um, so it's something to think about. Just <clears throat> thanks for the super chat. If I'm missing stuff in a chat, I apologize. Um, here, let me catch up a little bit here. Okay, I am a full-time eBay seller of nine years and doing great. I only shop at Goodwill, laugh out loud. It is great. I am 35 years old. So, I mean, <clears throat> single-person game, right? It's very doable, too. I mean, if you love to do everything that you're doing, sourcing, listing, shipping, uh, it's, it's very doable, and it's great. But eventually, you reach that point, like I said earlier, that, you know, you can only do so much. So why not Why not to look into it, you know, hiring somebody? Just think about it. Even if you hire somebody, and I'm, I'm going to try to talk realistic numbers here. Even if you hire somebody part-time, let's say for four to five hours, let's say four hours a day, 20 hours a week, so five days, five days a week, four hours a day, um, you pay him, let's say, 10 bucks an hour, uh, at the beginning, at the start, because you got to train them. Of course, if everything works out, you can always up up the game for them. Um, Ten bucks an hour, four hours a day. It's costing you forty bucks a day. Realistically, that person, if you're picking up unique stuff, um, and and I'm saying like not new in a box, but just unique, you're picking up stuff like this that it takes a little bit of cleaning research. Uh, and, and good pictures and a little bit of decent description, uh, it's not going to be an item that you can list in five minutes, right? So I'm thinking, let's say you can roughly list maybe three items an hour, one every 20 minutes. Um, so that person in four hours can roughly list you maybe, what, uh, 12 items? Uh, three, four, yeah, 12 items. I don't think if you are a good hustler, you know the game already, and you are out there every day, that you can't find decent 12 items every single day when you go out there, right? I'd, and just bear with me here. I would consider selling all this stuff at least at $30 profit or higher. Um, anything less than 30 bucks, it's not worth the time to, I think, have an employee because the costs eventually will catch up with you unless you're buying big quantities of stuff, same item, you know, 20 of this, 10 of that, then it's a different ballgame, could be cheaper. But I'm, I'm talking $30 plus. $30 plus, if you find 12 items a day, that's like 360 bucks. Um, 40 goes to your employee to list them. Um, maybe you have a small warehouse that it's going to cost you, I don't know, five, six hundred bucks a month. So that's another 20 bucks a month, a day that you got to devote. Um, so finding 12 items a day at 30 bucks profit, that's about $360. After paying them and your warehouse and some other fees, you are still going to make pretty decent profit. Um, so it's something to think about. I mean, I know people that that they can find a lot more profitable items in that six, eight-hour day. Um, you know, it's 
it's incredible how actually then quickly you can build up your business, right? And then if you're finding more stuff, you can add hours for that employee. Uh, and eventually he becomes a full-timer and he's listing a lot more for you and, and you're getting more contacts, you're more out there on the street. It's all about being out there on the street and making those connections to bring those good items into the house to be listed. So, uh, all right, let's see. Let me Let me catch up a little bit with the chat here and then this is not going to be a long show by any means i just i just got a few pointers here that i wanted to share with you guys because it's been questions that have been popping up either through email for me or people coming into my shop and talking to me about it so i just want to you know talk about it a little bit here on the live show all right let's see what did i miss in the chat Another another super chat. I do appreciate it. I am also training people how to make hmm. So you actually come to my shop. Okay, I see That name doesn't sound familiar, but um, next time introduce yourself by your YouTube name Um Here's a question. Okay, here's your eBay store. Awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate the super chat. Um, is your sales are increasing for holiday season? Um, they've been very steady. Sales across the board would be really steady for me. Uh, it's not like I really gear up for a Q4. Uh, we do a little bit of Amazon. Uh, most of the stuff is eBay and I sell stuff that it's a lot of it. It's stuff that people want all year round. And then there's stuff that it's just one of a kind. Um, there is not a whole lot of competition. So it really doesn't matter um, if it's June, July, March, or we are two weeks before Christmas. Of course, Christmas always going to ramp up, right? Because people are always going to search more. But for me at the moment, I'm not seeing any difference in the sales that I had a month ago, or two months ago, or right now at the moment. It's, it's pretty much still the same. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get a quick wave coming up um, shortly. It's usually it's usually right around Thanksgiving. I think that Black Friday is that like a ramp up. Uh, but the whole next month, we I think we should start seeing a little increase. Okay, let's see. Question. There's a question. Do you know how Chad and his family are doing uh, after Hurricane? They're doing great. Actually, it missed them. Thank God it missed them. They're doing fine. Uh, Chad has been posting some uh, um, videos, um, metal detecting on a beach and, and fishing with his uh, uh, metal uh, magnet. <laughs> more power to him um it's funny to watch that when he does that uh so they're doing great i i think everything is fine no issues um you know today's friday night normally at this time we do the reseller poll show um he's been busy i've been busy uh ronnie's been busy so we want to get back to it we did a couple shows and uh, we're going to keep doing it. The show is not over or anything like that. So if anybody wants to know what's going on with reseller polls. Hey, what's up, Mike? My glo global voodoo in the house. Pete, tell me the secret to the lottery scratch tickets. Actually, today, I think it's the mega millions, right? Or whatever. It was like a $900 million or some crazy number that the drawing is tonight. Insane. I think it's like the highest ever been. I don't have the secret, Mike. I don't have the secret. Okay, now I know. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, let me catch up here. Uh... I'm sorry, I cannot share that live. We ever meet for a drink, I'll tell you. You guys keep asking me how come I don't have an eBay store. I just don't. 
would you stop reselling with one billion? Good, good question, huh? Gosh. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's a few other things I want to do in this life. Whatever I got left. Yeah, man, I can't even imagine one billion. One billion. Gosh, that's a shit lot of money. Wow, crazy. <laughs> I win a billion, I'm still going to pick. Probably. I mean, it's kind of in the blood, right? I mean, it's just you never stop. But that's right. I mean, you can get into some serious thing with that kind of money. I mean, you know, you can start flipping, you know, yachts for $2 million. So there's always a game out there when you have big money, you know? We are nobody, right? The stuff that we flip is like, you know, peanuts. I want to share with you guys. So, okay. So we got about, what, 230 people watching. So I've been listening to this. I want to give him a shout out. And, and I don't do shout outs for many people, but this is relatively new. And a lot of people, a lot of times ask, what is the good, what is the good podcast to listen? Uh, now you can listen to them or watch them, but they do really good podcasts. Uh, they started a few months ago and I've been watching them. And what's interesting about this podcast, it's two guys. One is pretty, pretty knowledgeable, been hustling for a long time, has his uh, reselling game really set up and knows what he's talking about. The guy who does the podcast with him, on the other hand, just started reselling as they started the podcast. And one guy is guiding the other what to do and how to do it. And it's very interesting to listen to them and see their perspective, especially the new guy, um, how the things are going, what he's getting into, what mistakes he makes. It's super interesting. So, so their name is Pure Hustle Podcast. That's Pure Hustle Podcast. Uh, and I'm going to put their link below after the show. They only been around now for a few months. Uh, I listened to probably like 10, 13 episodes. And, and now I'm realizing they're actually getting better with everything that they do. I wonder if any of you guys heard them. Um, find them, subscribe to them, because they're putting out some great content. There's great audio. You can, you can just listen to them or you can watch them. Um, but they're great. Pure Hustle Podcast. I think they got like about 20 episodes right now. They've been on for uh, for a few months, and they're great. And, and their point of view of the new guy that's getting into the stuff and the guy who's experienced and, and how they talk about things, it's, it's great. So I wanted to give him a shout-out. Uh, if you go and subscribe to them, tell them that I send you, that the Pete send you. I'm sure they're appreciated. They are only at like 200 subscribers, and they deserve more. And I know there's a lot of people out there with great content, but anybody new that pops up, and especially like Strictly Podcast, because I know I love listening to podcasts. I don't watch as many videos, but I listen to podcasts. When I'm driving, when I'm doing something, it's playing in the background. I know everybody loves that. So uh, share some love. Go to their, go to their YouTube channel and... Uh, and uh, subscribe to them. So, Pete, why hasn't eBay started new payment process? Um, well, I think from the beginning when they announced, they said it's going to take a couple years before they fully integrate it. I think right now it's totally in a data structure that they only pick certain sellers that you could sign up for it. Um, Actually, I never received any info from them about it or to be in any part of tryout or data or anything like that. So I don't know how that is going for them. Um, I know a few people had emails, please join. Um, but how is it really working? I don't know. And I probably won't sign up till it's like fully integrated and, and all the glitches are out because it's been so glitchy lately. Okay, what am I missing here? Any questions, guys? 
let's uh, let me answer some questions. I think I covered what I wanted to cover. You know, I wanted to to share with you guys about that Hi-Fi Shark website. Go check them out um, for uh, for vintage electronics, any kind of electronics. You can find stuff there. That's uh, that's good place to uh, locate items if you can't find. You know, you can't find names like Macintosh. You know, Kenwood, Sherwood, JBL, Klipsch, Nakamichi, Sony, Sansui, Maran, JVC, Sharp, Yamaha, Fisher, Realistic. All these names are crazy. You walking by them and then you buy something you can't find it. You know, so it's a great website to be on. Pete, do you sell any other places online except eBay? Yes, we do. So we sell on Amazon. Um, this year, I ramped up a little bit Amazon. Right now, we have probably about fifteen to twenty percent of the business. It was smaller throughout the year, maybe about five ten percent. Now we are in Q four. We got a little bit more stuff there. Um, mainly eBay. I do a lot of um, local apps. Uh, we do a ton, a ton of Facebook Marketplace. Offer up, uh, let go, um, and we stopped completely posting on Craigslist. For me, it was a waste of time. Craigslist is uh, in Chicagoland area went nuts. Nothing but spam and and traffic. I haven't been driving any traffic, and it's hard to post. Uh, so, but offer up, it's crazy. Offer up brings me a lot of business. We sell a lot of locally on offer up. Let's see, let's see. Sorry, guys, let me back up a little bit, see if I can find some decent questions. Uh, same question. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Video videos have been incredible. I'm trying. I'm not putting as much content, but I'm trying to at least put out one or two videos a week, you know. So it's it's not easy. Um, <laughs> do you do extreme couponing? No, I remember that show on TV, extreme couponing. Uh, Sorry, guys, I'm just going through some chat here. So do you do Black Friday sales? Um, not really. We are very busy, though, on Friday, especially afternoon Friday, because everybody that buys the stuff comes to us and sell it in the shop. It's kind of crazy that the whole Friday afternoon and Saturday, the next two days after Black Friday are, are insane. People buy in doubles and... Uh, Hey, I see Raleigh Roots in a chat. Hi, guys. What's up? How you doing? Okay. Do sewing machines do well for you? Uh, yeah, they do. Um, just remember, they're fragile to ship. I just had a big Husqvarna come back to me because it got completely uh, damaged in the shipping, like destroyed in the shipping. Um, even though it was uh, bubble wrapped, in peanuts and double box i don't know what happened to that package but you know the whole upper part the head plastic head of the sewing machine was like cracked in half i don't know how that happened somebody must have just like dropped it for from 10 or 20 feet crazy um so they are pretty fragile things can go wrong um the heavy duty vintage ones that will sell really good for good money um, the ones that you can do embroidery with it, they will sell for good money. Um, so yeah, I, I when I spot a, a sewing machine for, for, for cheap, I'll definitely buy it. Um, you just got to make sure everything is there, you know. Um, the pedal is there, all the cords are there, the bobbin is there, um, and overall condition. So it's easy, easy to track that stuff on eBay and see the comps, you know. If you can buy one for... 10 12 bucks or 15 bucks and it sells for 100 or 150 why not all right mm. 
ghost bidders. What about ghost bidders? I, I don't understand your question. Solution. Um, I don't know if there are ghost bidders. It's hard to tell, right? Um, you know, I, I do quite a bit of actions, not many. Um, I do actions on stuff that are they're unique and unusual. Those usually go for an action on, on, on my eBay. Um, I wish a couple things that eBay would change when somebody makes you an offer or it's an action that it, you require instant payment. I don't understand why eBay allows people to have some time before they pay if they win an action. Um, maybe that's what you're talking about, ghost bidders. You know, they bid and they don't uh, they don't pay up. So I wish that eBay changed that. I mean, it's crying out loud, 2018. I don't understand why they can't figure that out. I have many people bidding things up, then withdrawing the day before it ends. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, Mike, uh, Mercari does that. I mean, most of the places, you know, you got to pay up right away. It's I, I feel it's a binding contract. You know, you bid on it, you want, it's yours, you pay. Simple. What do I think about drop shipping? Um, my honest opinion, like honest opinion, stay away for it. If you don't want to get your account in trouble. I mean, there's ways to do it, but if if you know who you're dealing with and they're dependable and you can rely on them that they always have the product that they promise that they have, then you can do drop shipping. But otherwise, it's a scary game, you know. All it takes is a few uh, cancellations that you got to do because you can't fulfill the order because somebody's out of it it's on a back order all of a sudden you trouble you do a few of those you'll be out of uh, any platform quickly views on a china postage thing um yeah i think it's about time actually i think it's about time that we are on the same we gotta be hopefully because i think that's not supposed to take effect maybe all the way up to 2020 so it's going to take some time, but it was kind of ridiculous that Chinese sellers can almost ship something here from China all the way overseas to here cheaper than I'm shipping something from Illinois to Wisconsin just across the border. That's insane. That's crazy. How can you compete with that? So hopefully that's going to change uh, hopefully sooner than later. So I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, that's going to eliminate a lot of these BS sellers that you couldn't compete, especially on the cheaper stuff, right? Because when it was bigger and heavier stuff, not so much. I don't remember exactly what was the weight amount. It was like three pounds or four pounds or something like that. Um, that would ship almost at the same rate as like 16 ounces or whatever. And crazy, something crazy. I'm hoping that it's changing quickly because that's that's good for us resellers. I think that's going to help us a lot. It's going to level out the game a little bit, you know, especially when you're selling smaller, new, new, cheaper things. You know, how can you compete on selling, you know, um, like a, you know, stylus? This is uh, for one of the gramophones that I have here. Uh, something like this that it's, you know, only 30 bucks. Um, and you can ship it, you know, for free here. I mean, you can't even compete. I just, I, I don't want to even get into it, but I'm, hopefully it's it's in our favor. Okay. Who bought the Mega Million ticket? That's what I want to know. Who bought the Mega Million ticket? Not me. Not me. They make it cheap and they ship it cheap. Yeah, I know. How how you compete with that? <laughs> Funny. Uh, I, I guess I remind a lot of people here, right? Kim just ran out and bought a twenty dollar ticket. Uh, Mike, if you win, I I want like point zero 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 one percent. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Any other questions, guys? I've been on for what like forty minutes. Uh, I went over my topics. Uh, I can answer a couple more questions here and.
that I'm going to call it a night. I wasn't planning to do a show today. wasn't planned or anything. I'm like, ah, I got a few topics. I'm just going to pop on and talk to you guys. What about Terminal 99? Yeah, great channel. Absolutely. You want to learn? You want some knowledge? Go watch that guy. I can't believe, uh, I can't believe uh, he has only like 10, 12,000 subscribers. He should have 100. He's got so much knowledge. It's crazy. Yeah, the lottery, also known as uh, poor tax. Yeah. How do you go from fifteen hundred sales a month to five or ten thousand? I think that's what I just talked about earlier. You know, um, that's that bracket that you get in, and it's hard to go over it um, to scale it up. I, you got to start having people working for you, you know, so you have more time out there on the street to find the item so you can bring in and people list for you. I mean, that's, that was my main struggle back in the day. Um, you got to have, you, to scale it, you got to have, you can't do everything. It's just impossible. Not enough time in a day, guys. Not enough time in a day. Now, if you're happy only with, you know, a few hundred extra bucks a month or a couple grand a month, whatever you're doing, uh, whatever the number is for you, more power to you. I mean, some people don't want to have employees. Some people don't want to go that route. But if you want to scale it up and make a business out of it, you have to. It doesn't matter if it's like a shop if I'm running, I need help in it. Or, um, you know, if you're running decent size, you know, even flea market, you know, you also need help. You need somebody to load up the stuff, take it for you, set it up, you know. You can ask Mike right here. He did, uh, he did some, you know, he always had some help to set it up. You always need some help if you want to bring more stuff and scale up and and make more profits. I mean, it's simple as that. So we can only do so much as a one-person one game. Cześć, Piotrek. Thanks, Krill. I appreciate the super chat. It's funny because I got the computer here and I got a mouse here. Sometimes I move the mouse here thinking that I'm moving the mouse on my laptop over here. That's crazy. That's just me. Krillin is asking, do you know why eBay stock got hit today? I have no idea. I haven't followed anything what's going on today as far as like, you know, stock market or anything like that. So I couldn't answer that question. I don't know. If anything, they should go up, right? I think they're suing Amazon, aren't they? I'm not going to get into that because I don't know exact details. All I heard uh, that they were going after Amazon, that apparently Amazon was trying to steal some sellers from eBay. Just kind of weird that they would do that, but that's what I heard. So, How do you deal with Vero takedowns? You just got to be be careful. Um, what did I have lately that was taken down? Hmm. Gosh, it, was, it wasn't too long ago, just like a couple of weeks ago. Can't remember now. Um, something about, I think it was a, was it a BB gun? And it was just a box, I think, of BB gun that we were selling. Can't remember now. Just gotta be careful, man. There's there's a lot of them out there. There's lists of heroes that you can look up. Um, yeah, I don't remember exactly what it was. Was it? Maybe it was something else. We had a few. You just gotta be careful. I mean, there's there's ton of stuff that you can hit you with the Vero, but. Okay, somebody's saying eBay stock got hit because of PayPal bad mounting eBay. Move to the new payment. Okay. All right. Well, possible. I mean, you know, they've been botting heads ever since they went their their own ways. Um, I think like PayPal is doing phenomenal when it comes to their market share um, and and their stock is just continuously going up and eBay has been like flat for years. So I think PayPal is actually like three times bigger than eBay now after they separated. It's crazy. That was a, that was an interesting separation. 
What's your typical day look like from morning when you go to sleep? Uh, it all depends. Like today I was off, right? I was doing some errands in the morning, um, putting out some, it was actually ugly and rainy, but I needed to cover my lights on, it, on a new house with these orange fixtures that I bought. Uh, I mean, I had regular lights, but I bought these orange covers for, for, for my fixtures. So I did that in the rain uh, for Halloween um, because my lights were too bright. And then I did some errands. I listed, actually. I started my project again, my eBay uh, separate account project that it's happening right here in this location, in my house, in this main cave. I listed, I think, 10 items today on eBay. But typical day, uh, I get up usually every day about 7 in the morning, uh, spend about an hour in the house before I leave, uh, answering emails, checking social media, things like that. I leave usually about 8 o'clock. I head to the shop. It's a 15-minute ride. I'm there about 8.15, and then it's packing. Um, every day, we usually got about 10, 15, 20 items to pack. Depends on the day. Um, then I take them to the post office because that gives me an opportunity to grab a cup of coffee. And then we open the shop. Um, there's a, usually, it's either, one of us is always in there, either me or Adrian at eight fifteen to get everything ready. And then both of us are always there by 9.30 that we can talk over certain things before we open if we need to. Then the shop opens. And um, the, all depends what kind of appointments we have throughout the day, either me or Adrian. Most of the time, it's actually me lately going on, you know, house calls and picking up stuff and doing a little bit of uh, thrifting. But usually we have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, those three days pretty booked up throughout the week for different appointments to pick up stuff. It's either stuff strictly for eBay, strictly for the shop. Um, and that happens throughout the day, usually from like 10 in the morning till about 4 or 5 p.m. And then I come back to the shop and I stayed in the shop depending on a day, usually till 6 p.m., sometimes till close till 7 p.m. That's a typical day. Um, I don't work every single weekend. I work every other weekend. Um, so like this weekend, I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Next weekend, I'm going to be working Friday and Saturday. I'll have only Sunday work off. I'm never there on Sundays. Um, it's short hours for the shop on Sunday anyway. We are only open from 10 to 4, only 6 hours. So kind of every day is different. I go different places, do different things. I mean, you guys see a little bit of on, on video when I put out some of the videos if I go out. Um, but it's always something happening. Always something happening. Do you want to retire or work forever? Um, I think it's an excellent, actually, question. <sighs> Depends how you look at it. Is This is work. I don't think this is work. That's the thing. I don't think this is work. When, you, when people say a lot of times, yes, I do get burned out, and I need a break sometimes to get away and do something else for a week or so. Um, but when you do something that you really enjoy and like, and, and almost to the point that you love getting up in the morning and going and doing that, it's not really work. So when I go on vacation, after four or five days, I'm trying to source on my vacation, that means I'm ready already to come back to my work. That's how much I, I like what I do. So it's not really work. So I'm saying retire from it. What am I going to do then? You you get where I'm going with this? <laughs> it's like I I really like what I do. So for me to retire from it probably will never happen. Uh, keeps me busy. Keeps me focused. Keeps me entertained. Keeps just act me being active and, and like what I do. Yeah, exactly. And Mike, you know, Mike Global Voodoo says the same thing. I feel blessed doing this that I feel retired. Um, 
it's just in our blood that's what we like to do you know it's just it is what it is all right, guys, a couple uh, last final questions I'll take from you. And uh, I've been on for almost an hour. Um, appreciate you guys watching, almost 300 of you. Hit that like button for me if you can. That helps the video uh, get a little bit more views and be spread out by YouTube in their algorithm. So if you can hit that like button, I would appreciate it. Um, yeah, thumbs up, Pete. Thank you very much. Uh, do you stack gold or silver? I've been a hoarder of silver for years now. Um, I, I really enjoy buying silver in all kinds of forms. Uh, it could be just a scrap silver, jewelry. I love coins. I love bullion. Um, you know, I know silver has been kind of flat. It took a little dip. Uh, same as gold. It's been pretty much flat for the last, you know, couple of years. But I think it's going to be on a rise. Uh, it's cheap. It's cheap now. If you can buy silver, buy it. Hoarder it. Why not? I do it. I say I do it. You should too. I'm just kidding. Don't listen to me. How old is Milo? <laughs> Milo is about nine. Yeah, I think he's nine. Eight or nine. It was two of them, actually. Sad story. I said... I told that story before. There's two brothers, identical. The only way you can tell them apart, different color eyes. Uh, and one of them died a long time ago, about six, seven years ago. Yeah, seven years ago. Uh, got bitten by the possum and got infected. And that's why we decided uh, to bring Milo into the shop inside. Uh, because both of them were outside in our shop out in Belvedere by Rockford, which was like an hour away. <sighs> okay. What does Milo do at night? He guards the place. What do you mean what he does? He's the security guard with Ruby. They both guard the place. Actually, we have to lock him up in a separate room. He has his own room for the night, the room that doesn't have motion detector sensors. Because otherwise he sets off uh, the alarm. Chris here from Michael Island. Ma, I'm gonna be there next month. I'm driving with my daughter. She has her. She's finishing up her um, vet school, and um, so she has to attend right now. She's pretty much done with school. She's now uh, doing her internships in different zoos, and she's gonna be for three weeks at uh, Naples Zoo starting after Thanksgiving. So actually I'm driving there with her uh, for a few days because a very good friend of mine uh, lives at Marco Island and she's actually gonna be staying with him. So if you wanna hook up on Marco Island, hit me up. I'm gonna be there right after Thanksgiving. Can't wait. I'm gonna go and do some, uh, we're gonna do some deep sea fishing. <laughs> Ruby smokes cigars at night. Yeah. Yeah, guys, I I feel so proud of myself. This is I'm gonna end the show because I feel good. Uh give me thumbs up just for that. So a couple days ago, six months ago, I quit smoking. Cold turkey. I feel great. Um, I still get an urge here and there, you know. Uh, but I feel great. I did gain about 20 pounds since then. Well, I gained 20 pounds like immediately within the first two months. You know, I was snacking on so much stuff and now it's been kind of steady. Um, so I'm trying, you know, I ride my bike. It got colder now. I've been running. I ride my bike. Uh, I've been trying to watch what I eat, but, you know, I feel good, man. I, I'm so glad I kicked that habit. So thanks, Mike, man. You should do the same. I know you want to. You should do the same, man. Those things will freaking kill you. 32 years I've been smoking, and uh, now I'm done. Thank you guys for watching. A couple of reminders here. Go and subscribe to the podcast, Pure Hustle Podcast. I will put a link below. Actually, maybe I can put a link here. Oh, it's okay. I'll put it in below in the description after the, the video is done. Pure Hustle Podcast. Go subscribe to them. Tell them Pete sent you. Uh, and start using that website, Hi-Fi uh, Hi Shark. Excellent if you want to find out some pricing.
Thanks, guys, for watching. Till next time. Appreciate it. Love you. Cheers.